All right, so welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Zoom version. And um, <laughs> what we do is once the appointed time arrives, which it has, we have Mary, our secretary, read the legal notice. And then at the end of that, we'll ask you if it's an accurate uh, recounting of what you're asking for. Okay, so when you're ready, Mary, go ahead. Legal notice, Zoning Board of Appeals, Town of Waitley. Notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals of Waitley will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 6, 2021 at 6.40 p.m. The hearing will take place virtually via Zoom. The rules of decorum for a public hearing remain in effect and the chairperson will seek comments from the public when appropriate to do so. On March 26, 2021, David Lamero applied for a variance to allow construction of an above ground pool in his backyard between the side property line and away from the septic tank and field on premises he owns at 31 Swamp Road. Application for the variance is to be considered under the provisions of the Waitley Zoning Bylaws as provided by Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A. This notice is also published electronically on www.recorder.com slash public dash notices and www.masspublicnotices.org. And what follows that is the Zoom access information and codes for computer or toll-free phone. And the notice is signed Roger P. Lipton Chair, Zoning Board of Appeals, April 22nd and 29th, 2021. Uh, the 22nd and the 29th are the dates that this notice ran in the Greenfield Recorder, the two preceding weeks. Okay, so does that seem accurate to you, sir? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, we're good. All right, well then the floor is yours. Why don't you tell us uh, about your property, uh, what you're trying to do, and um, we may ask us some questions. Sure. So uh, working with teddy bear pools and spas down in Chicopee um, to purchase an above ground pool. Um, it's about 24 uh, foot in diameter and 52 inches uh, high. And we want to place it close enough to the house so that eventually down the road, we can incorporate a deck um, that meets to it as opposed to just getting off and then walking up a ladder. Uh, we have small children, so we're trying to kind of make it look nice. Uh, so the, me, I, could, you, could you just give me that diameter figure again, please? Oh, sure. Yes, it's uh, 24 foot. 24. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, we mapped it out, uh, you know, kind of last fall, the ideal location of it and where we would like it to, to kind of uh, sit for construction. Um, and then, of course, went through the permitting process up through Franklin County, uh, the co-op. And that's when we uh, learned about the setback limits. And we said, oh, that might be a problem for us. Because the way that our lot is configured, the front yard, I'm sure, as you can tell from our lot lines, is plenty of space. But then it tapers in the backyard quite a bit. Uh, right where the ideal location of the pool would be. And if we wanted to pick a different location to kind of move the pool over uh, towards the other side, that's where we kind of encroach upon the septic tank and then also the field. And I understand that there are certain limits that you definitely do not want to um, impose upon for that. Uh, so that's why we'd like to just go a little bit more closer and hug uh, the side property marker for my neighbor. So can you give us dimensions about... Um what you're talking about in terms of how close to the neighbor you're going to become? Sure. Is it, I have actually some documentation, some illustrations. Would it be okay if I shared my screen? Yes. Awesome. Oh, host disabled participant screen sharing. Can you check your host um, credential, Kristen? Just go up to the top corner and I, I, I did and I, I did enable it. I'm not sure. Um, did it, has it oh, happened? It's there. There it is now. Uh, I actually do yes. Zoom all day at work, so we run into this often, so thank you. <laughs> all right. So this is just kind of um, last fall when we plotted out the location. So I've kind of indicated here, this is where the septic tank is, and then the field, we have uh, the distribution boxes over here, kind of to the left of the fire pit. And then also you can see the two trenches that uh, run out for the leaching field. And then this area here is ideally far enough away from the septic tank and then far enough away from the house uh, for that 24 foot in diameter pool. And uh, I understand that the setback limit on the side yard is 20 feet. Uh, we're not looking to go all the way up to the fence. We'd like to go 10 feet. I'd still like to fit something like a vehicle uh, in between the pool and the side yard property line, just in case we need to get something back 
to the, the rear part of the lot. Um, but this is just kind of a rough illustration of what we're thinking of. And then of course, this orange line here just indicates a trench that we would need according to an electrician um, to run the pump. And so who gave you the um, 10 feet away from the septic system rule or guideline? So I actually did some research on my own, um, just uh, off the mass.gov sites, um, just looking at anything and everything for private septic systems and what it should be. Uh, and I understand it, it's 10 feet. It's, I should have had the link up here, so I apologize. I don't have it. Um, but I was looking for above ground, and that's where they uh, relayed to me. It's 10 feet, and I believe for an in-ground system, it's even further away. And now you say you applied to the um, <clears throat> Franklin County Building uh, Cooperative. Did you get a letter of um, denial from Mr. Hawkins? I did, James Hawkins or Jim Hawkins, if he prefers that. Uh, that's who I'm working with. And so last we uh, kind of corresponded, he have a status of denied there and he said, you need to go through the town. So that's why I went through this process for the variance. You but I've worked with him before. Oh, go ahead. You don't happen to have that letter on your screen, do you? Or, uh, or did we receive it, Mary, by any chance, do you know? I don't recall it, I can look. I'm using their online permitting system. So I, I believe there's a, I forget what the URL is, but there's a, a portal for me to log in and I've paid the fee, um, but we kind of stopped short of site plan because he said, you know, it doesn't make sense for you to go any further because you're encroaching upon the setback limits. Uh, so the status is denied in the system, but I haven't received any letters or uh, anything in the mail. Okay. Um, well, we can certainly take your word for that. So, um, did you have a chance to look at the rules in our bylaw about variances? Very little. I have to admit that this is uh, completely new to me. The only, I haven't applied for a variance before. The last time we did a project on our property was for a shed um, and that, we had no problem putting that on the other side of the, of the backyard. So first time pool owner, hopefully, um, but I just am not really too familiar with this, um, with this process. So I can summarize the rules on variances are, are rather tough in that um, this basically comes from state law that filters down to the way our bylaws are written and it, That the variance shall only be granted when the board finds that number one, a little enforcement of the provisions of this chapter would involve a substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner. Number two, the hardship is owing to circumstances relating to the soil conditions, shape, or topography of the land or structure and especially affecting such land or structure, but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it is located. And that three, desirable relief may be granted without either substantial detriment to the public good or nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of this chapter. So um, the issue that you face and that we also face in trying to make a decision is um, whether there's any other configuration that or maybe not perfectly desirable for you that pool to go in there and, uh, and do so without violating the, the bylaw. And the theory of it is among other things is if we grant a variance in one case for one person such as yourself, then we set precedent and can be expected by the townsfolk to do it in the next case that comes along. Uh, so as an example, earlier this uh, late winter, we denied a variance for somebody who had a um, um, carport slash garage that he wanted to put in, in a convenient location and the septic issue was there also and he wanted to put it closer to his sideline. But when we went out and did a view, um, we somewhat regrettably 
had to tell him that we didn't think that it was impossible for him to only locate that structure there in violation of the sideline. So looking at your um, backyard there, although I can see that it's desirable where you have it, I also see other open green space where it could conceivably go. So this is, you know, it's really, we like to say the burdens on you, the petitioner to make your case. So I'm sort of giving you the, the backdrop. Can you, can you make any case for us that it's only sure. going to go there and can't go anywhere else? Sure. I think the desirable case for us in the hardship, of course, is um, further away, you know, that becomes a little bit more challenging in terms of running electrical and utilities to the pool. And then, of course, just um, from a personal uh, standpoint, for improving the property down the road, it would be um, optimal to have us incorporate this into future backyard uh, improvements and renovations, such as the deck, like I mentioned earlier, and then maybe eventually a patio uh, type situation. So the pool, while not the focal point of the backyard, it would be really nice to have this as a first um, step um, so that we could further our plan down the road in, in terms of what we want to do to the property. Uh, it's just, unfortunately, like I said earlier, that front yard, if that straight line of the lot, and of course we knew this when we bought the place, uh, had extended all the way to the back, I mean, we wouldn't be here. It would be it would be a no-brainer. Uh, and I've spoken to my neighbor about that too, just to, to get his take on it. And, you know, you know we feel that it's um, it doesn't necessarily detract from the property, um, especially in the neighborhood. Uh, it's just unfortunate the way that our septic system is kind of taking up a lot of the uh, optimal space to place this structure for this project in the backyard. Could you put that um, picture up yeah. again? I sure can. So I, I have a question about your fire pit. Um, that's obviously a lovely, a lovely structure that you have there, but um, what if that was not there? So we've actually talked about that. That will be moving uh, regardless. Uh, so that location, uh, while it looks nice in the picture here, we realized if we were approved for the variance for the pool, um, just optics, it's not the, in the greatest location and we would need to tear that down for construction of the pool. Um, so that is not staying there in, in either decision. Well, then what if you were to move the pool um, toward, toward where the fire pit is and back a bit? So that, that's certainly an option, um, maybe move towards the birch trees a little bit here, uh, kind of moving, if you guys can see my mouse in that area. Um, that, would, that would definitely be a, uh, an option, I guess, just further down the road for us, again, going back to the fact that we want to improve. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, that's okay, shall I continue? Yes, please, I just okay. muted my phone. Oh, that's okay. So um, while that would be uh, a nice alternative Again, looking forward, just big picture here. Uh, another issue that we would have is when we go to improve the deck, uh, there's a deck that kind of needs replacement and we were looking to do that as another project. Um, to expand that deck, I think we're kind of limited as well, again, because of the septic system, uh, the main pipe coming out of the house leading to the distribution box. So we're just trying to weigh all our options here and, and didn't necessarily want to be painted into a corner with this, uh, knowing again that we want to incorporate the backyard uh, screened in deck, that sort of thing. If you're going to put a, a deck where they or improve the existing deck that's shown in a, in the bottom of the picture, what's the dimensions from that deck to the pool then? If you're going to connect it. So I don't have this measurement right here. Um, I would say it's at least 20 feet. I don't um, know how much, you know, that deck project hasn't really come up between uh, you know, contractors quite yet. Ideally, we would like to keep the same dimensions of the deck, maybe widen it a little bit here. I have a garage over here that's kind of outside of the view. So if the pool were to go here, we would nice, like to have a nice little, I guess you would call it a, a sunbathing area or something like that, a walkway uh, that takes the deck right to the pool. Um, and so I'm just trying to be mindful of the fact that there are certain uh, distances that I have to be away from the leaching field and the tank for all of the projects. Okay, what, what is the dimension where the, you show the, the pool there at 24 feet, what's the dimension from the 10 foot lot line you show there to the edge of the fire pit? That would be about 40 or so feet. So you've got another 
another okay that's that's but 30, then we um run into another the 20 field. feet almost yes and i guess what i'm afraid of there is while the tank is convenient because of the minimum distance for the tank that limitation increases once you talk about the field that becomes 20 feet no, which I'm, i actually i'm talking of on your diagram, you show the words 24 foot. Okay, what is, what is that dimension along that line from, from say the lot line or that 10 foot to the going to, the, I guess the left on, uh, yeah, right there, what is that dimension? So I apologize, sir, I don't have that dimension uh, definitively defined in the image, but I would say that lot line to where the mouse is right now on the cursor, probably 40, in excess of 40 feet. But I do not have the measure. Go on ahead. The lot line you're saying, not to yes, sir. So you've got another six feet. You could, I, I guess, move over without touching the fire pit. Right. Okay. So then you'd be 16 feet away from the. Correct. So this line, line here, this initial line near the fence, is meant to indicate the actual uh, property okay. line with a neighbor, and then okay. this other line here just says that would be my minimum desirable uh, limit for the edge of the pool to that 10 foot. But yes, you're correct. I could definitely uh, move in this direction to the left a little bit and then just be mindful of the corner of the tank uh, to make sure I'm exceeding that limit. What, what's the dimension of your fire pit, the circular? What size is that? That is about, I'd say that's about 12 feet maybe. Okay. So you'd still have, if you took the fire pit out, you still would be a reasonable distance away from the leach field, I guess. I believe so. I, I think this line here is, represents a, a 20 foot edge boundary. Um, I would have to confirm that. Have you looked at any other size pools, any other shape? Pools. Don't they come in rectangles too? Of course, and the diameter that we have is actually kind of on the on the larger side. Uh, they offer this specific one that we place the deposit down in 18, 21, and 24 foot diameters. So we could go with a smaller pool uh, to hopefully get it in this location. I think we would still run into an area, an issue with the, the side marker anyway. Um, again, definitely moving the fire pit, that's happening. Um, it's just being mindful of the field that we're encroaching upon the more we move towards the left. I guess that's my big thing, my recurring theme. The reason I asked about rectangle pools, I looked at pools years ago, uh, above ground pools, and I seem to recall that they offered rectangle ones at the time. So um, They do. They offer an oval one, uh, of course, for you know uh, about 20% more money and it holds less water and uh, they're, they're quick to Unless it fits a specific use case, um, you know those were those were offered to us, and we said, "Oh, we kind of look like the look of the of the circular one a little bit better." Sure, sure. Well, but all these things point out to um, uh, or um, our arguments against the hardship uh, that you have to establish, because you know if there's a reasonably available alternative, even if it's not the best uh, option, the hardship case is, is hard to make. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, I hate to say that to you, I actually am a pool lover myself, um, but it does seem that there's there are options to you there. Um, so any other, any butters here? Neighbors of butters, no? Okay. Um, any other questions or comments by anybody? All right, so what we need to do as a board is first of all, decide who our voting panel is gonna be because we um, we have four members present on the screen and we only need three. So I'm, uh, I'm available to vote. So I'll vote um, Deborah or Kristen or Fred. I'm, I'm certainly you, available to vote. Okay. Kristen or Fred, one of you needs to drop in and drop, the other one needs to drop out. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll vote. You'll vote. Okay. 
All right, so then the formal way we do this, then if there are no other comments, we will, um, I'll just tell you what I'm gonna do and then I'll do it. We're gonna close the public dialogue portion of the meeting and then we'll proceed to um, have a short uh, discussion among the board members and we'll proceed to, to vote. So I'm gonna make a motion to close the public dialogue portion of the meeting. I will second. Okay. So, um, as I mentioned, we ran into a very similar case uh, earlier this year. And um, as with this petitioner, a very pleasant uh, gentleman, and um, I could see his reason for approaching the board, but, and it's primarily due to the stringent nature of the way the statute and the bylaw is written, we did vote against him. So in this particular case, uh, his own screenshot actually uh, works against the argument that it's a hardship and the little enforcement of the bylaw would um, create a substantial hardship. So, you know, unless we wanted to open up floodgates and uh, apologize to the gentleman who we denied recently, I think uh, with all due respect, we have to deny the uh, petition and that's how I would vote, but I'm willing to listen to the other members. No, I, I have to agree, Roger. I I, um, I certainly remember when I joined the board, I was I had a much more open mind toward variances until I attended a workshop at Franklin County Planner's Office who really laid out the requirements of the hardship. I absolutely understand your desire aesthetically. It, it's a much better plan. Um, but as Roger had mentioned, it would create a precedent in, in terms of, of in the setbacks and lot requirements. Um, and there are alternatives to you, even though they are not as, as pleasant and in keeping with your, with your plan, but I'm, a, I'm afraid I, I can't vote to um, uh, approve a variance. Okay, yeah, I, I guess I, I agree with what you're saying, Deborah and Roger, that I think there is other options for for the location of that pool uh, to be with no closer than 20 feet to the property line. I think the other options uh, that appear to, to me to be uh, readily available, I, I guess. Uh, it doesn't seem that there's any other obstructions in the way. And, and you kind of indicated you're going to move the fire pit, I guess, is for one thing. Uh, that gives you more room, I, I guess, to move it closer that 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 direction, that way, or or towards the back of the lot. Uh, so I, I guess I would vote to deny it because I think there there are other, uh, I would think, feasible options to, that you could explore, feasible locations to put it in. Okay, all right. So we have to take a roll call vote in, in the Zoom era here. So um, I will cast the vote against the petition. As will I. Uh, I'll vote no. Okay. All right. Well, sorry, sir. It actually requires a unanimous vote of all three of us in favor. So uh, it's in the other direction. But uh, you seem to have a good spirit and sense of humor about you. I'm sure you'll come up with something that's good for your family. Sir, thank you very much. I appreciate the time tonight. All right. Thank, thank you. you. We're sorry. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> have a good night. Take care. Yeah, okay. you too. All right. Um, do we have anyone here for the seven o'clock hearing? I'm here. I'm here. And are you expecting anybody else? We are, I'm not. Okay. Um, I want to take two minutes. I need to drink of water and, and to have a cup here. I'll be back in two minutes, then we can start. Well, you know what, Mayor? You can read the you can read the legal notice. It should take me a minute to get some water. Okay. Be with you in a moment. <clears throat> Legal notice, Town of uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, Town of Waitley. Notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals of Waitley will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 6th, 2021 at 7 p.m. The hearing will take place virtually via Zoom, the rules of decorum for a public hearing, 
remain in effect and the chairperson will seek comments from the public when appropriate to do so. On April 13th, 2021, the town of Waitley applied for a special permit to construct a driveway and a 12 by 24 foot building for a booster pump station to provide domestic and fire water services to the town of Waitley on premises located at North Street, map 19-0-02, parcel 39-02-38 in the, <clears throat> excuse me, agricultural residential zone two or agricultural residential two zone and owned by Quan Quan Farm LLC and the town of Waitley. Access driveway makes use of existing apron and gravel road for town cemetery. Just, yeah, okay. <laughs> Pump station building is located on the southwest corner of Quan Quan Farm property within an easement. <clears throat> the location for the booster pump station is optimal since it is adjacent to the town water main and the district distribution line, providing a straightforward connection and discharge to serve town residents. Application for the special permit is to be considered under the provisions of the Waitley zoning bylaws as provided by Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A. This notice is also published electronically on www.recorder.com slash public dash notices and www.masspublicnotices.org. There follows the uh, connection information for uh, joining the meeting by computer or toll-free telephone. And the notice is signed Roger P. Lipton Chair, Zoning Board of Appeals. And this notice ran in the Greenfield Report recorder on uh, April 22nd and 29th, 2021. Okay, any objections to the way that was written and published? Um, I guess I'm, I'm Lucy Conley from BDG. <laughs> uh, I thought Wayne might be on. Uh, the building is slightly wider. Uh, it's 14 feet wide uh, as drawn on the plan. Um, I think uh, uh, I guess this is what was written on the, on the, the text portion, I guess. So right. That, so but, that, um, what was I, the difference again? The, the, the building is currently drawn at 14 feet by 20. Um, I think Wayne is, is getting, uh, an architect involved. So I, that might change it slightly. Okay. Uh, we need the width to fit the, the pumps. Okay, go ahead. Um, so uh, you you said most of what I can say, say but I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll repeat uh, some of it in that. Um, the town water department is going to take over the water district. The two districts are going to merge. Um, this has come about that the district has had um, issues with, with water quality and staffing and, and other things. And so um, the water department it, um, has agreed to take over the water district. And um, in order to do, to do that, um, the water, uh, the water department um, will have to, will use the water from the tank in its system, but um, it needs to boost the pressure in that water to serve the water district customers. And this is what this building would do. Excuse me, but I, I thought I was following which is taking over which, but I think I lost. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because it confuses me still. So the water department is taking over the district. Okay. The district is a small system that serves the Waitley Inn and about 40 customers in the center of town. So the water department's taking over the district and they need an extra boost of, of pressure, was it? To, right. To, to serve the district company. Customers, the customers exactly. So th yes. Will there still be a dist there still be two names or just one? Just one. No, the, the district will be dissolved. Okay, so it'll just be the water department, okay. Right. Thanks. 
And so the, the town water main going up to the tank uh, is actually in this location. It follows the Quan Quan farm property line up to the tank. And so this station would be next to that, to that water main and which makes it easy for it to tap water off of it and boost it and then send it back. And then the water coming out would go straight down to North um, to Chestnut Plain Road and hook back into the existing district line. Lucy, who do you um, work for? Berkshire Design Group. Okay. EDG, I got it. Sorry, I should have written it out. Um, right, so uh, the town is in the process of obtaining an easement from Quant Quant Farm um, to locate the, the pump station building. Um, access would be from an existing apron uh, into the town cemetery. Uh, and um, I think that's about it. Do you have a diagram that displays this? Um, well, I should have, what I'll have to do is, the problem is I'm on Zoom on my home computer and this is on my work computer, but I can email it to myself and then maybe I can display my screen. Um, you know, if you can, we don't have trouble. So um, as far as that easement is concerned, um, this might be apparent on the sketch, but the physical, um, Pump station is going to be on the Quant Quant farmland. Yes. And the easement is to allow the pipes to cross from where to the pump station. What's the the, e the easement would be uh, to the town from Quant Quant Farm so that they could build their building on on uh, Quant Quant's property. But where do the pipes run? Obviously. The pipes run. Um, well, um, the, one second, I'm trying to do too many things at once here. Um, <laughs> sorry, I should have thought of that. I, I haven't done one of these on Zoom and I didn't know whether I would be having to present. Um, so let's see, let me get my act together here. Oops. Yeah. I'm so sorry. It's okay. If it would help, I have a copy of the application on my computer. Oh, well, um, I think I I think I might have done it here. Okay, CBA. All right, uh, so the plan set. Um, okay. Wow, this is weird. Um, <laughs> What is going on here? Maybe Neil can share the screen or? Um, I'm just having a problem with Outlook now, but um, I have it here. It's just. Um... Oh, I think, I oh, think got got here. Okay. here we go. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, so um, we're showing the, that this is the existing condition plan that shows the, um, the, the main, the 16 inch water main, right, right uh, inside of Quant Quant's property. So to the, between the fence line and it's in a 30 foot easement. Okay. So that's the existing condition. Um, and you can also see on this plan, the apron um, 
into the cemetery. Mm -hmm. And in a very light line, it shows the gravel road. And on the next sheet, um, it shows the, uh, the actual plan. I'll have to make that a little bit smaller. So the, the plan was to improve the, um, uh, the, the apron currently is asphalt. So we were going to improve the driveway um, up the, the existing gravel lane up to the point where uh, we can get into our site. And um, there's the building and north of the building is um, Plan North, which is really um, west, That's west. Is, yeah. is the uh, generator and then a, an underground propane tank. And um, so you can see the, the, um, the there's a, a connection to the water. Now the town water main is, is in light, light gray. And you can see uh, the connection going into the pump station, just a short, uh, short piece of water main, uh, a little bit higher, right, right above your, right there is a little, that's how the water goes in. And then just below it, it comes back out and then it turns and uh, heads down and then uh, left and into the district water main. You know, whose land is that? Um, so as it goes down, it's in Quant Quant's land. And then uh, as it leaves the pump, pump station, it's in on Quant Quant's land in the same um, easement as the water main. And then it, now at that point where your mouse is, now it's in the right of way for the, um, for Chestnut Plain. It's in the town water uh, right of way. Yes, what's marked North Street is actually in that section, Chestnut Plain. Um, and, and that's where it joins the, the town. Right, it, okay. turns, it turns left and then uh, a little bit further down, it joins the town, the existing town line. Okay. Um, the existing water district line. I'm sorry, yes. So what about this um, proposal, in your opinion or view, requires a special permit? So it's located in AR1 and um, I would, from what I recall, um, there was a, it required a special permit. It wasn't, um, okay, it's, it wasn't allowed by, um, by right. But is it allowed by special permit? Yes. Can you it, um, direct us to where you see that? It was a, um, it's a town utility or something. Uh, I think I wrote it on sheet three. Or maybe I didn't. Next time I will be more organized. <laughs> now that I know what I'm, what I'm being, what I'm going to be asked. Um, I did a category on page seven. Maybe that's what I'm, I'm sorry. Is it category at the bottom of page seven? Maybe that's what you're talking about. Public utility service stations or facilities, radio or television stations or transmitting facilities, railroad or bus depots with other public utility or communications uses. Uh, 
name on the next page is other municipal or governmental uses. That seems like it would be the closest. Uh, well, either or, I suppose. Yeah, that's what we were looking at is, is the public um, utility service station or facilities. Okay. Under community facilities. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, which, which one under community facilities? The, the last public. one, Mary, public utilities, public utility service stations. Service stations, okay. Yeah. All right, so your argument is that the town water department is a public utility and this pump house is a service station to that utility? Yeah. Is that the argument, Lucy? Um, well, it is a public utility. Yeah, I, I, the wording is odd, um, but there was nothing else that fitted. And so it's part of the water department's um, um, how the operation. So does the water department have other structures that are similar throughout town? Or is this unique? Say, say that again. Or does the water department have other similar structures throughout the town or is this unique? I think that Wayne has one other pump station. It's for Westbrook Road. Yes. At the intersection of Chestnut Plain and Westbrook Road, there's a booster pump for serving the residences on Westbrook Road. Yeah, that one is, I think, an underground. The only other one that's above ground in a building like this is the main water department pump station on Chestnut Plain Road yeah. near the wells. All right, well, those are all the questions I had. Any, um, any butters here who have questions or any other board members, I should say, who have questions? I don't have any. I don't have any. Uh, I have not questions, but I just want to call the board's attention to the letter that uh, the cemetery commissioners, of which I am one, uh, sent to the board. Uh, it's not clear to me that the issues that concern us have anything to do with the special permit. Uh, they more have to do with communicating with the town and its water department that the cemetery has some uh, essential issues to protect the burial grounds uh, and the environment for the cemetery. Uh, and we were not approached during the planning stage. Uh, and so this seemed to be a time to alert everyone that uh, it's, it just takes some attention to details that include the fact that we don't plow that dirt road. And so the water department would have to plan to plow it to have access mm -hmm. for service. And we have concerns about where they would plow the snow. And we also have concerns about having a, a propane refill uh, truck pulling into the cemetery on whatever time schedule that would have to be to refill the tank. Because the tank is so far from Chestnut Plain Road that it, I don't know if they could run a hose from the apron all the way to the propane tank. So um, I think that's all within the fine grain details and not in any way suggesting uh, uh, an objection to the special permit, but rather uh, concerns that the planning include the uh, concerns of the cemetery commission uh, to protect the cemetery itself, uh, at both during construction and then during plowing season and during fueling of the propane tank. Thank you for raising that, Neil. Yes. Uh, question. Roger, I have both of those, both letters that 
the board got here if you need them. I could read them. Yeah, I may have you read them in a minute, but my, my question is, are you, uh, this is to Lynn and the petitioner, are you um, also seeking planning board approval? Yes. Okay. And uh, they, uh, we, we, uh, we haven't had our hearing, but we did meet with them a couple of weeks ago and they brought up the cemetery commission also. So I'm, I'm glad that this is happening. So it, it seems to me that those concerns mm -hmm. are more in the in the bailiwick of the planning board than in the zoning board, but obviously they're important. So um, yeah, Mary, you, you should read the letters. Okay. I'll have to get them back on my screen here. Okay, here's the one from Waitley Cemetery Commissioners dated May 3rd, 2021 to the Planning Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals of Waitley, Massachusetts. Regarding hearings on plans to build a pump house to connect the Waitley Water District to the Town Water Department. We support the purchase of the necessary pumps and construction of the necessary housing facility to connect the two water systems to ensure reliable water for the consumers in the Waitley Water District, which include the Waitley Center Cemetery users. We note that the designers of the plans, <clears throat> both engineers and members of the Water Department, have not consulted with us in writing or in person and have assumed that they may use the cemetery access road for construction and maintenance of the new facilities without consulting with the cemetery commissioners. We trust that the following concerns will be addressed in the plan and that we will be consulted before the plan is finalized. One, during construction, the cemetery burial plots should be protected with a temporary fence so that construction equipment remains outside the burial plot areas. We may need access to use the northernmost cemetery access road for burials during the construction period. We recommend that construction equipment and vehicles not linger in the cemetery and not turn around in the cemetery. Two, the northernmost cemetery access road, which will surely be disturbed by construction activities, should be restored to present conditions or better after construction is completed. Three, there should be restoration of the boundary fence, which has already been disturbed by preliminary work similar to the fence that previously separated the Quan Quan farm property from the cemetery property to minimize incursions of people, pets, and wild animals across that boundary. The water department may want an additional fence demarcating the boundary between the pump facility area and the balance of Quan Quan farm property, but that is an issue to be taken up with the farm owners. Four, pump house should have adequate acoustic insulation or other features to minimize pump noise external to the pump house, which would disrupt the peace and tranquility desired in cemetery spaces. Of course, this does not need be of concern at those relatively rare times when the booster pump is activated or when the backup generator is in use, such as in times of firefighting or weekly brief testing of the backup generator. Five, plans should be clear for the path to be used for personnel and vehicle access to the pump house facility for maintenance, including plans for parking if needed and plans for wintertime plowing, something that the cemetery commissioners do not do or arrange, that do not disturb these cemetery burial plots. This should include, but not be limited to, forbidding plow vehicles from turning around in the cemetery perhaps they should be required to drive in and back out, and forbidding snow removal vehicles from piling plowed snow on the burial plots to the south of the cemetery access road or further west on the cemetery access road as the unmelted snow piles would block access needed for burials and cemetery maintenance in early spring. We recommend that snow be piled by plowing or snow blowing to the north side of the cemetery access road. It might be wise to consider a plan to use a snow blower rather than a plow. 
We also ask that the plans include the annual installation during winter season of demarcation posts at the south edge of the cemetery access road to indicate where plowed snow and vehicle movement are forbidden and the removal of those posts when there is no threat of snow during spring, summer, and fall. Six, we note that the current design for the propane tank location, for which there is a suggestion that it would be buried, is the furthest possible from Chestnut Plain Road, and that location may require that the propane delivery truck enter the cemetery to make deliveries. It would be best if the tank were close enough to the road that the delivery truck could remain outside the picket fence boundary of the cemetery while delivering propane, and this should be clearly stated and arranged with the propane delivery company. If the propane tank is not to be buried, we expect that there would be an appropriate wooden fence to shield it from view from the cemetery. Thank you for your consideration of these requests and recommendations. Signed Cemetery Commissioners, Darcy Tozier and Neil Abram. Uh, copies to Waitley Water Department, Brian Domina, Town Administrator. That's the conclusion. Do you want me to go on to the other yes. letter at this point? Okay. Just a moment, please. This is a letter from the Historical Commission, uh, dated May 4th, addressed to Roger Lipton, Chair, Zoning Board of Appeals, and Don Sluter, Chair, Planning Board. Dear Roger and Don, the Waitley Historical Commission met Monday night to consider the town's application to install a 12 foot by 24 foot pump house adjacent to the town's historic town center cemetery. We had, we had requested drawings and an elevation of the proposed building for our meeting, but none were available. The comments in this letter therefore should be considered preliminary. The plans made available to us, dated April 8th, indicate that an eight foot wide bituminous drive will be installed from Chestnut Plain Road to the pump house in the rear of the cemetery. We believe that inserting a paved asphalt drive on the cemetery property would detract considerably from its historic character and request that the current gravel and grass drive, upgraded and maintained as necessary for pump house access, be retained instead. We are unable to provide specific comments on a design that we have not seen, but suggest the following guidelines for the pump house structure. Uh, one, character to be appropriate to the 18th and 19th century dwellings and outbuildings of the town center historic district. Two, clapboard exterior. Three, architectural asphalt shingles or standing seam metal roofing. And four, lighting to be low impact, motion activated lighting would be ideal, so as not to damage the cemetery's peaceful environment. The plans refer to a gate to be installed on the pump house drive, but no information is provided about it. It will be important to conform with the overall character of the cemetery and the surrounding picket fence in determining the size, style, and materials to be used for the proposed gate. Finally, we note that propane tanks may be buried adjacent to the new pump house. We ask that the extent and depth of any ground disturbance be minimized to the greatest extent possible and that the town agrees to halt work and notify the historical mission should, commission should any evidence of prehistoric or historic features be discovered during installation of the new structure and surrounding equipment. Thank you for your consideration of these requests. We will meet again on Monday, June 7th and hope to review actual drawings at that time. We are entirely supportive of the planned merger of the private Waitley Water District and the town's water system and wish to avoid any delay of that work. We would, as always, be pleased to elaborate upon these comments upon request. Sincerely yours, uh, Donna L. Wiley, Chair, with copies to Wayne Hutkowski, Water Department, and Brian Domina, Town Administrator. 
And that's the conclusion of that one. Thank you, Mary. I have a question for the petitioner. How uh, frequently will that pump be running? So inside the building, there's two, uh, two systems, one, one three pump skid for the domestic flow. Uh, that's a requirement from um, DE, DEP is that you have a standby pump. So two pumps, one pump is running and then it alternates and then you have to have a standby. And so those are, that's a skid of three small pumps. And there's another skid in there for fire, which is a, a, another three pump skid uh, for the thousand GPM fire flow. So uh, most of the, all of the time, the domestic pumps will be running. Um, but there's also a water tank in there, a bladder tank, a, a, a 300 gallon tank. So the pumps won't have to run all the time because the system can feed off of the bladder tank. So, but of course, so, I mean, during the day, I would assume the domestic pumps would be um, kicking on quite a bit to, to uh, satisfy demand. And once the systems are merged, how many households are served or will be served? I think it's 40. Uh, 40 was with the water district. 40, I, um, that's my recollection is that there's 40 um, homes on the, um, it, it, on the is, water. Is Mary Stewart still? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, Mary, you know those numbers, don't you? How many clients and how many public buildings and then the Wigley Inn? Um, yeah, there's, there's, I think it's 43 hookups and 40 paying customers. So um, the cemetery and the, the school and the library, I think, don't pay. Is that for the district or is that for the department? That's the water district. The water department at Wayne's not here, but the water department is the rest of town. <clears throat> so it's huge. I think it's, right. um, it's not all of the town because it's not in West Whaley. So, does anybody have a number of what the number of households or let's say customers will be once the two systems merge? So, I can tell you in, in um, one second here how many are on the on the water on the town water department. Um, I think it's 800. That sounds right. 800. Total population served by the water department is about 800. And then- Population uh, or houses? It's population. The so, population is roughly 360 properties that are served by the water department in town currently. 340 to 360, I forget one, one it's that many. In my recollection here, you're gonna add another 40 or 42 more to that so, water system. So it's about 400, I guess is what I'm- Right. right. No. The, it's worth noting that the Waitley Inn uh, consumes about 30%, I think that's right, Mary, of, of the uh, water from the water district. So it, it's a heavy user compared to domestic users. Uh, Okay. Um, anyone else who would like to speak? Roger, what is kind of deceiving, just looking at the picture, is it, it doesn't give you any sense of the grades of the elevation. Uh, and that's, I think, entered into the reasoning why that building is there and probably why the uh, propane tank has to be in the back and not in the front. I think to, to get a, a better appreciation of, of the lot and the impact on the cemetery, it may be worthwhile to, to have a site visit to see where this is being proposed. 
Fred, I've enlarged the uh, the plan. The one foot contour lines I, are are on the the plan that I'm sharing. You can see the two hundreds yeah. here. Those lines indicate one foot elevation change. Okay, I I appreciate you doing that, but but still, sometimes it's better to see it with the naked eye when we're there looking at the property and trying to visualize a building and access to it and what the vegetation around it is. I, I hear that's a, a concern to, I, I guess, shield the, the building from abutters. Uh, that doesn't show on a, on, a, on a map here. That's just, just my thought. You know, Roger, we go look at other properties. I hear what you're saying, Fred. It's, it's not a bad idea at all. No. Uh, it's not a bad idea at all. Let me ask this question. What's the status of your, you said there was negotiations with Quantqua. What's the status of those negotiations? So I, uh, I don't think that they, I think they've approached Quantqua with this because um, we've, we went in front of the conservation commission. I mean, I didn't, I just uh, got this job, <laughs> but last year, uh, Mark Darnold went in front of the conservation commission um, and uh, we have an order of conditions on from them uh, for their requirements because we're in the riverfront. Um, and so I, I'm, I would say that Quan Quan has been approached by the town. The, they have, we are working on the uh, description of the easement. So they don't have the easement yet. Quan Quan has expressed that they're agreeable to this going forward. Okay, well, it sounds to me like many of the concerns are appropriate for the planning board. It certainly seems like a worthy goal I and mean, serve, you know, at least a good chunk of about half of the town, maybe more than half of the town. Because um, what, there's about 600 households in Waitley, right, Frank? Uh no, it's close to 800, I think. Oh, so about half. Yeah. I'm happy to take a view. Yeah. No, I think that would be a good idea. So why don't we look at our calendars and, and take, a, take a view? I could do it this Saturday. I could as well. Yeah, I'm available. There, there's a burial uh, right adjacent to uh, this site at 2 p.m. on Saturday. Okay. So it would be best if you're not disturb that, I would say, between 1.30 and 3.30. Oh, yeah, we usually go in the morning. So um, we want to do it at 11 or we want to do it at 10? Um, I could do either time. I would vote for 11, actually. Okay. Yeah, it sounds good. And also, also Roger, I, I, I think I would like to be clear. I mean, I think the, the issues raised in the two letters read tonight are important ones, and I would like to be clear about what's planning board and what's ZBA. Um, so that's, I'm glad we have time to look into that. Okay. What What's the date of this Saturday? Uh, May 8th. Thank you. Eight. Okay, so we're, we're at 11? Yep. Okay. So then we should, uh, well, we should ask, first of all, do we have permission to enter the property? I mean, if it's owned by Quantquat, there's not automatic permission. Um, Actually, okay, I don't I, know that you can enter the property from there. Uh, that is, there, there is a fence right there, right now. Right, am I right, Neil? Well, actually the fence had to be opened in order for the preliminary construction work to be done that put in some of the of the pipes um, for the connection. So uh, that's just a, a very simple attachment that can be opened. Uh, and I'd be happy to be there to uh, to show you how to do that. But, but be I think very someone, helpful. someone should approach Allison Bell or uh, uh, someone representing the farms. Uh, I can I can email Anne and ask her if it's okay that yep. people come Saturday morning. 
yeah, I don't think there would be a problem, but I think they should know in advance. Is, Thank you. Excuse me, but is I'll write a notice to be posted uh, letting the public know that it's available to the public, even though it's not part of the hearing. Is there any particular identifying number or description of where on the property people should go to, to attend this if they want to? There, there is parking uh, along uh, the grassy sward that is to the west of Chestnut Plain Road, and they should enter in the northernmost uh, cemetery access. There are, there are three entry dirt roads into the cemetery. And this one is the northernmost uh, at the northern edge of the cemetery. Okay. And the uh, parking is on a grassy sward at what was that location? <laughs> uh, it's it's west of uh, of Chestnut Plain Road and outside of the picket fence that provides the boundary uh, to the cemetery itself. Okay. And then that's where they'll find the northernmost edge entry. Yes. Got it. It's it's immediately across from the center school. Okay. <laughs> All right, so then we should pick a time when we're gonna reconvene. So that would be our next meeting which would be June. I think I said June 3rd yesterday when I was talking about meetings. Yeah. Yeah, Thursday, June 3rd. So Mary, is, at this moment, is anything else scheduled for June 3rd? Uh, no, not, nothing scheduled at this point. Okay. So I, I just asked, Lucy, are you still on? Yes. What is the status of, of I guess, getting a we call it architect or designer to design the building? Where, where does that stand? Is that happening? And, and... That, uh, from my last conversation with Wayne, he was working on that, yes. So would we see a, a final design of that by our next meeting? And I guess what we're looking at, June? I would hope so. He was trying to get it for uh, our planning board meeting, uh, which I think is on the 11th. Um, but he he was having issues because everyone's so busy. So I I, I would hope that by June he would definitely have it. So, uh, so your I'm sorry, your planning board hearing is on the 11th of May. I think it's I, I think that's on the 27th now. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. Okay. <laughs> But, but that will be good information for us to have after their meeting. Right. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, we'll see some of you Saturday and we'll see uh, everyone else June 3rd. Once I speak with Anne, who should I contact about her response? Mary. Okay, um, I can give you, well, actually you, you can just send it to ZBA at waitley.org. At waitley okay. It'll come to me. Okay. And I can share it with the rest of the, the board, all the board members. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's a quick turnaround, so that should occur tomorrow. That's right, I'll pick up the phone. Yeah, okay. Would, uh, would you like me to be there on Saturday? To, uh, or are you um, all set? <laughs> well, I, I think either you or I guess Wayne would be there to, if you're going to show us where the building is and connections and the tank and all. Otherwise, we're, we're looking at a what? An open field, open lot? A wood, it's a wooded area. I'll, I'll wooded talk area, to Wayne. Right. I'll talk to Wayne then. 11 on Saturday. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
<clears throat> All right, we have another um, meeting. It was supposed to start at 7.30, so it's 7.50. I want to just take a two-minute standing stretching break. So actually, if everyone else is ready to go, what worked well last? Oh, we don't have to read the legal notice, though, because we are. Oh, it's we're, a continuance. Yeah, it's a continuance. So I'll just be back in two minutes. I'm just going to stretch my legs. <clears throat> Where are the peeper sounds coming from? My window. <laughs> oh, I love it. It could be it could be my window too. <laughs> Mine too. I was like, wait, am I muted? <laughs> like... <laughs> I usually don't have the window open, but it got a little warm up here today. <laughs> so. It is. It's a beautiful day. Hummingbirds are out. Hummingbirds yes. come to our house today. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So who do we have present on the uh, Sovereign Builders continuation? Hello, that'd be me. My name is Christopher Carney. I work as a land surveyor and civil engineer at R. Lebeck Associates. I'm here tonight on behalf of Potsler of Sovereign Builders uh, for the proposed self-storage facility located off State Road in Waitley, across the street from Tom Putbar. Uh, tonight I'm here uh, to request a two special permits for this project, one for the proposed use as a self-storage facility, and two for the sign location outside of the property boundaries within the street right there. On Saturday, we had a site visit. Uh, I believe some of the planning board members may have attended, but uh, and DBA members have attended, but um, I don't see any familiar faces on the screen right now. So, Chris, I'm here, Todd Salura, Sovereign Builders. Alan Burson is here representing me as well to talk to the uh, some of the concerns of the driveway separations that we talked about last week. Great, so um, I'll go ahead and share the screen and get the plans and do a brief overview of the site uh, just to refresh everyone's memories and then we can get into any questions that you may have about the project. Uh, so the project is a proposed self-storage facility located off State Road in Waitley, uh, better described as Map 5, Parcel 29. Uh, today, we're looking at a revised plan set with a vision date of April 29th. I believe these plans are distributed to the UBA today. Uh, the change, the revised sheets are existing conditions, layout, grading, landscaping, and B6, which is the wetland crossing. Uh, existing conditions was modified to show the new um, flood zone area based on floodplain analysis done by our Lebec Associates and myself. As we move forward, uh, the demolition and removal plan has not changed from our last um, visit. Uh, the layout and materials plan has changed. Changes for this included uh, the new gate location located in the front of the property that was moved from approximately here uh, to the front in order to limit cars from coming into the site and parking outside of view from anyone on Route 5 and 10. That will increase the security and safety of the property as well as the case of owner. Excuse me, Chris. Uh, another... are, are these plans the ones that just came in uh, that are the revisions are dated April 29th? Correct. Thank you. Uh, another revision on this plan is the 100-year um, floodplain uh, analysis and uh, these leaders are pointing to the post condition uh, base flood elevation. Additionally, um, calculations for compensatory storage were made and uh, the clearing limit for compensatory storage and some earth removal is shown uh, adjacent to Route 5 and 10. This was a previous area of wetland replication just expanded slightly in order to provide the required comp storage for the property. And these are all, all these provisions are noted um, here. Uh, in addition to those previously mentioned revisions, the stockade fence along the southern property boundary 
uh, had ended here in order to shield uh, this southerly abutter from the property. Uh, based on some concerns voiced by the ZBA and the southerly abutter, that stockade fence has been extended to here. Uh, that way, his buildings, which are located right here, you will not be able to stand in his buildings and look backward and see the, the, uh, the, see the proposed structures. There have been some revisions to the grading plan. They primarily revolve around the compensatory storage contour shown here adjacent to State Road. I don't think anything, any other revisions on this plan are uh, applicable to ZBA. We'll skip ahead to the landscaping sheet. Uh, this landscaping sheet has been revised. Uh, again, the gate and comp storage area have been revised, but more importantly for us and for discussion purposes tonight, are the 10 white pines that have been placed behind the stockade fence. Those, I, I, I believe everyone on this board is probably familiar with the white pine. Um, they're the tall softwood tree and they'll reach a height that will shield these buildings uh, very quickly. They, they're quickly growing free. They're located behind the stockade fence and they'll quickly overtop the stockade fence and block any upper stories of this center building from site to the south. In addition to these 10 white pine trees, uh, 20 Irish yews are proposed along the southerly boundary behind the guardrail. Uh, these will pr uh, provide a visual and um, access buffer to the property to the south. We've gone ahead, uh, Irish yews were selected based on some comments from the planning board. They were looking for a deer resistant plant that was uh, softwood and providing uh, year-round cover, um, as well as being not arborvitaes. So these are not arborvitae trees. I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with uh, an Irish yew, and, but uh, here's a, a picture of an Irish yew similar to an arborvitae, but it can be pruned in pretty dramatic fashion as it matures. Nice alternative to an arborvitae. You say those are deer resistant? Uh, they are labeled as, as deer resistant. Um, no, no plant in the winter is fully deer resistant and no, uh, <laughs> no plant provider will label a plant as fully deer resistant as they get hungry. <laughs> uh, but they're uh, resistant, you can say. I think Deborah's laughing because she knows I planted 10 arborvitae on my property in the the deer got them during the winter. Oh my God. Uh, deer just make such sport in my own yard. <laughs> so I understand. <laughs> There's some toxins in the U inside the, the leaves and the needles of the U, which I think make them more tolerant than an arborvitae to deer. But uh, still, there's some warnings that no plant is fully tolerant to deer, unfortunately. So, with this vegetation that you're planting along that lot line, how soon before it gets to a uh, reasonable height to shield the building? How long are you talking? A year, two, three years? Um, so right from the very beginning, this uh, stockade fence uh, will be installed and that'll shield the building from anyone walking. Uh, there is an upper story to this building. So that's the purpose of these white pine trees. When we look at the, the plant table, I don't want to misspeak, but we are requiring that the uh, white pines are a two and a half inch caliper tree. That's a pretty large tree to be purchasing and it comes at a cost to, to Mr. Solera, but I think it's worthwhile in order to provide the buffer to the south. In addition to those 10 white pines, we have the 20 uh, Paxis Bacata, the Irish U, and those will be two to three feet in height. Uh, <clears throat> so already a substantial tree. They should last and be well maintained by the applicant. But also they're a hardy tree. They're partially shade tolerant. And as we zoom out, we'll see that they're either planted very close to the tree line. So they will be in partial shade already. And the existing buffer to the south will, will aid uh, the overall buffer between these properties. Um, this driveway location, and we were out of the site visit and we walked it. Uh, it, it appeared to me, I don't want to speak out of line, but it appeared to me once we got back to the building areas and the open area, when we looked back, uh, I could no longer see the outbuildings to the south 
And I think the primary concern would be this uh, single lane drive area. That's my opinion after the site visit on Saturday. Um, the, the reason for the location of the driveway is because of wetland impacts. We uh, have submitted an NOI to the Waitley Conservation Commission. We haven't had a chance to meet with them or do a site visit, but there are some wetland impacts associated with this project, uh, namely the removal of a culvert and increasing into an open uh, bottom box culvert. That'll be a good thing for conservation, but it comes with the impact to a wetland area and a stream bed, which are uh, generally viewed as negatives. Uh, in addition to those impacts, as I zoom in on this area, you'll see that the wetland area, we did our best to uh, place the driveway over the smallest section of wetland impact. And this is the wetland disturbance here, which is offset by this wetland replication here. But as you can see, this driveway uh, is held to the southerly property line in order to keep the buffer from the wetland as it increases uh, away from the property, but to keep this driveway as far away from that wetland as possible. And there are a number of reasons why you'd want to keep all this construction as far away from the wetland as possible, mainly that it increases the wildlife habitat and the water quality of any water entering the wetland. The more water, the more chance water has to flow over this wooded area, the cleaner it gets before entering the uh, wetland area. Uh, it, the driveway is situated approximately eight feet from the property line. And as you can see, uh, in order to hit the 20 foot offset required by the driveway permit in Waitley, this driveway would need to shift 12 feet to the north, which would create a very significant wetland impact, something we are trying to avoid. We, we are working between two boards, uh, this GBA and the Conservation Commission, as well as planning, in order to provide a design that meets all of the town board requirements, which is, of course, a juggling act. I understand GBA has some concerns with the abutter to the south. Uh, and we are doing our best to address those with the plantings, hard rail, stockade fence, and trees. Uh, and the purpose of the, that buffer is to increase the wetland buffer and provide conservation commission with a plan that's suitable to their needs as well. So I'm just hoping that the board understands the give and take associated with this property. Uh, this line here represents the 50 foot wetland buffer. Generally, we try to keep all work outside the 50 foot buffer, but unfortunately for this project, that is just an impossibility. In order to access the upland area um, in the rear of the site, this wetland crossing is required. And we've placed it in the most logical spot in order to reduce wetland impact to functional minimum. As we move farther uh, up, up the site, you'll see not only the 50 foot wetland buffer, but um, let me get to my labels. We have the 50 foot wetland buffer, the 100 foot wetland buffer, which is really the uh, extent of conservation commission jurisdiction. But really any work within this 100 foot buffer, conservation has the right to weigh in with their opinion. Uh, beyond those, you'll see the um, 100 foot riparian zone and then the 200 foot riparian zone. These are not only regulated by your local conservation commission, but mass DEP. And work within this 200 foot buffer uh, is it's really, I, we're trying to minimize it as much as possible. You'll see this table up at the top, which um, Mr. Mark Stinson of Mass DEP will be looking at with great interest and look at the amount of uh, square footage impacted by this project within the riverfront area. We've included notes that so the reason why we are able to um, impact as much riverfront as possible is because uh, uh, the owner of the property and applicant has the right to access upland parts of their property. So this is really somewhat an exempted activity. While it's exempt and it, it's something that Mass DEP will, will work with us on, they will require us to keep these impacts to minimum. Uh, the way we were able to do that is by keeping the driveway width to the minimum width required by Waitley bylaws of 24 feet, as well as keeping the curb and um, retaining walls to minimum width in order to limit all impacts. 
in addition to that, as I get to the uh, sheet C6, we'll see the creative path taken by the utilities in order to reduce wetland impacts has been a directional boring machine, which will be stationed here and uh, probably better shown on C3, but it's a directional boring machine, which is kind of an interesting uh, machine, which will bore underground pipelines. Uh, that way we won't have to enter the wetlands. The machine will be staged here and here. And it's a directional drilling machine that uh, has a pipe attached to the back end of it that will um, allow us to put a pipe underneath this wetland area without disturbing this wetland area. I'm trying to reinforce the fact that we took a lot of time and put a lot of effort into minimizing the wetland impacts. Uh, that said, there are still considerable wetland impacts. And that's the reason for the driveway location being eight feet away from the property line. We felt that that number represented an, an amount where we could provide a suitable and pretty, pretty, pretty sizable vegetated buffer, as well as the fence buffer to the property line. That eight feet allows for those plantings, but it also helps us uh, reduce wetland impacts. Um, I don't want to skip over the second special permit part of this project, which was the sign location. This was staked out in the field. It's a proposed pylon sign located here. Uh, viewing it in the field, it, it, it's tucked inside the uh, existing wood line, which is matching the proposed wood line. No tree clearing is proposed along the front of the project with the exception of this small corridor for the directional boring machine. Uh, and some clearing for the uh, driveway, but this is tucked in an area where it will not present any site distance issues uh, from the site or from neighboring properties. It will be fairly well shielded. Uh, we're seeking this special permit from the town, but of course this is a mass DOT right of way and they will have their say uh, to the sign location as well. Of course, we would never move it closer to the road if a special permit is granted, but there is a strong chance that Mass DOT will ask us to uh, move the sign further away from the edge of pavement. Um, the second special permit has to do with the use of the building, which I think uh, is self-explanatory. So I think it, at this point, um, I've done a decent job of reminding everyone about the project and some of the constraints that this site has. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about the project. Oh, last time we had a question that was unanswered. How many units are there, storage units? Total count is in the range of 560 units. Ranging in size from two by five to 15 by 20. So, so that, yeah, many, many small units make up that count as well as larger units on the non-climate controlled buildings. I think there was also some discussion of the amount of traffic going in and out and and somebody was saying two or three vehicles a day. And I think we were suggesting that you look at some uh, national uh, or professional guidelines is for traffic, traffic movement for storage buildings like this to, to verify your two or three a day. Has any of that been done? So uh, we, we have a letter that, yeah, that Chris can share. <clears throat> This is this is a letter that's done by a, a by a, a real estate group that specializes in development and the sale of self storage facilities. It states that at the high point on a Saturday, you may 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 have five visits, five visitors. I don't know if you can read that. It's no, it's very clear. It's very clear. Um, generally, we found that self-storage units, as far as traffic impact, are one of the lowest, if not the lowest, uses uh, of this type of commercial development. Okay. People generally store their um, goods and 
forget about them for an extended period of time. Could you show us on the plan, where's the five, you say five regular parking and two handicapped? This is what he's saying is a, is a generalized figure for most properties, but yes, I'd be happy to show you where the parking is for this property. And how many uh, is parking. being proposed here? Uh, parking proposed here is based on your weightly guidelines, based on the office space inside the building, uh, with the requirement being six parking spaces, and we have one ADA parking space as required by uh, CMR regulations, uh, anything under 25, I believe, requires one parking space. I can pull those up, but I'm confident that the one ADA parking space meets the requirement for six parking spaces on site. Three parallel parking spaces against the building and three out front at the proposed office. Hmm. So you're only proposing three plus the handicap, you're saying? Uh, six parking spaces in total, three in the front, three along the side of the building. Those are really for the office uh, entrance, but a lot of, uh, many of these storage buildings have a uh, garage door type entry. So patrons will be able to park uh, in front of the buildings and load and unload uh, goods as necessary. But as that letter states that the six parking spaces uh, will exceed the requirements of the property, considering that generally a high point of five people is reached on a Saturday morning. And the credentials of this gentleman who wrote it are here, as noted from Todd, he has uh, a long and extensive history working with self-storage units and he is in the real estate trade. Would you be able to um, email a copy of this to us for the records, please? Yes. You could just send it to zba at waitley.org. Okay. Thank you. Would, would all of this be built at once, all the, the buildings, all the storage units, or is it going to be phased in? Uh, so that's undecided at this point, but likely to be phased. But in order to phase it, if, if, if I do phase it, I would put the foundation in for the larger building. But, but in, so if, if to be phased, the two non-climate controlled uh, outer buildings would be built first, but the foundation for the three-story building would be put in at the same time so that we wouldn't have to disturb roadway pavement or drainage or any of that. We could construct at a later date. Um, but I want to leave the option open and I don't want to mislead anybody in that it might get, it might go up all at once, but uh, it depends on many factors, the economy and ability to get uh, bank financing at the time. And uh, so, um, I'm seeking an SBA loan for this, um, but in my crystal ball, the uh, economy ahead may be somewhat different than what we're seeing now. Okay. So I don't know. Yeah, it, it's it, these are interesting times, and in that the economy is very active. But I, but I'm afraid that due to materials costs and everything else that we're that there's a bubble, and so uh, I don't want to. I, I want to leave my options open to phase it or to do it all at once. What does your crystal ball forecast for reasonable occupancy levels? What are you looking at? Six so months, for two years? So typically speaking, these take up to three years to get to 70% occupancy. And this is, again, it's, it's economically dependent. Yeah. And so um, it's, very much, it's very hard to tell. But, that, but typically speaking, they take two, two years two to three years to get to 70%. And then it takes, um, you know, a very sh short period of time to get from there to, to about 90% or so. 
Okay. I have a question about that driveway. Is there enough room for two cars to pass in opposite directions? Yes, it is 24 feet in width as required by your weight lead bylaws. So that's 12 feet for one direction and 12 feet for the other direction. It's really a comfortable roadway. Uh, you could make it design a roadway to 20 feet in width and that would be uh, suitable for two-way traffic. So I'll ask, um, do any butters have any questions at this time? Um, I do. Um, so I appreciate the um, screening. That's the first I've seen of it. Um, but uh, I guess I was wondering too, what, um, you know, like if there will be, since, since the driveway and everything is so close to our property line, you know, what is gonna be the impact to our line? I'm assuming it, like things are gonna ha be happening right on the line, right? You know, I realize there'll be plantings and then there will be some screening, but I didn't know if there were any, um, you know, like bulldozers or things that will need to, you know, hit our property too, to, to deal with that. Um, I can throw out all my questions at once or wait, however you want me to do it. <laughs> I mean, these Zoom meetings have gotten in, informal a bit. Um, technically, I don't think I'm supposed to respond directly to your questions. I'm, I'm here to respond to the board. So I, yeah, um, so that's a, yeah, I don't know. Roger, if you want me to just throw out all my questions or, or what, whatever. Let's do, them, let's do them one by one. So if you okay. can, <laughs> sir, or Todd, sure, go ahead. Uh, so, okay. Go ahead, Chris, I'm sorry. No, no construction is proposed on your property. Uh, there is a silt fence proposed. I can pull up the plans again, but there'll, there'll be a silt fence uh, installed off of your property line within Todd's boundaries. And that'll serve as a fencing barrier to construction to keep all equipment inside the site during construction, as well as to keep all dirt uh, on site right? so that nothing does spill onto your property. Of course, we will never propose work on property that uh, is not owned by the applicant. So you can rest easy on that. Though, because of this, um, the way this design is, there is some grading that will be close to your property. I'll pull up the site plans again, just so you can feel uh, confident and comfortable with what we're proposing. The drainage and utilities along with erosion control will be the best sheet for us to look at. And so uh, it's an interesting topography in, in this, area and the way we'll design our roadway is to have minimal slopes. So we'll have some areas that are cut slopes and some areas that are fill slopes. Uh, the building, the existing outbuildings you have are approximately here. As you move up the driveway, um, you'll, you'll be at this retaining wall and there will be a, uh, a fill here. This driveway will be higher than existing grade and there'll be a slope that uh, comes close to the southerly boundary. As you can see, this SF uh, represents the silt fence that is placed uh, adjacent to the property line. As you move up further though, uh, the slope that is a cut slope here, turns into a fill slope here. So the driveway is actually set down below existing grade in this area. And, and that general formation continues a bit up the way. Uh, so this driveway will be set below the existing grade by a couple feet. And that'll act as an, an additional buffer from cars uh, to your property. Uh, it's really the best we can do in order to, of course, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but minimize wetland impacts and minimize cuts and uh, materials being brought onto and off of the site. Is that, did that answer your question? Like I said, I just, I realized it's close and, you know, we're not like, this is our line or anything, but it was, <laughs> everything just seemed very close, you know? And so I was just, yes. um, I, I guess I was wondering too, so that letter that was written, he says an average of five at one time at um, 10 a.m. on a Saturday, but what is the size of that storage facility? 
that he's, you know, is that just in general? Is that, you know, is that a storage facility this big or is it? Yeah, I believe this gentleman is representing this storage facility, but he has worked on storage facilities of all sorts of different sizes, some much larger than this one. Jen, let me add to that. Generally speaking, this the sort of a, the average size that the that self storage operators go for is ninety thousand to one hundred and ten thousand square feet. So most of his data is related to larger sites because the national chains that that build self storage um, target a size range that's larger than this, and so a lot of his data relates to larger sites. Yeah, I also want to clarify the, the unit count. Uh, the, the total, I'm sorry, is is 405 units. Thank you. Um, other questions? Yeah, so I guess the other thing I just wanted, you know, so we still do have some concern about the driveway and the box culvert then you know kind of increasing the water flow to our driveway culvert um and i don't know if that's something the zoning board deals with or if it's something for the conservation committee but i just wanted to bring up that that is still a concern of ours um even with you know some of these changes that are happening uh the other thing i guess that if if there is going to be potentially five cars at the at the peak which you suggest um and you're moving the gate forward now how many cars can then fit between the road and the the where the gate is located now? Yes, can you help with that? I, can. I mean, during business hours, Todd, will this gate be open or closed? I, th I think the question, really, the the gate has been moved to the to the close to the street to avoid cars stacking it when we're closed. So the gate, the gate will be open, uh, you know, the gate, the gate will potentially be open during hours that it's, that we're open, but uh, we really, we really don't want stacking of cars at the street. But Chris, I don't, I don't you'll have to, you'll have to speak to what area there is uh, at the road. Entering the exciting land of AutoCAD here, but I can take a very accurate measurement you know, using this software and let you know the distance. Generally, we have about 20 feet for a stacking distance for a car. I'll do this on screen so we can all see this. The, the gate is automatically operated also. It's a Bluetooth control scenario. So, it, and the gate will not open after hours of operation. So it's, it can auto, auto, automatically close down. So it won't open after hours of operation. So if somebody who has uh, access to the site, who has a unit drives up to the site on their phone with Bluetooth, they can open the gate. If somebody's coming to the site and wants to rent a, a unit, that would be during hours of operation and the gate would be open. And so as shown on screen, we have about 38 feet of distance between the proposed gate and the edge of pavement, which would allow for about two cars to be stacked there comfortably. Cars are about, they're, they're much shorter than 20 feet, but people tend to not pull up on each other's bumpers and pull directly up to the gate. So I guess the, you know, a, a concern of ours would potentially be then, you know, instead of cars stacking in the driveway, are they now going to stack it on five and 10 in front of our houses and, you know, cause traffic that way? So during business hours, Todd, the gate will be open during business hours? Well, we definitely want to avoid that scenario. And so... Um, we, we we do plan for the office to be uh, attended. It's it's it is a facility where during hours, but during out not all hours of operation should I say will the gate be open. But while the office is attended, the gate will be open. 
uh, to, to facilitate renting of units. But the hours of operation may exceed hours of uh, attendance. Typically would be there from say eight o'clock until five o'clock uh, in the office to rent units. But the facility may be, you know, I'd like for the facility to be open until 10 o'clock. Um, so the issue, you know, the, the likelihood that we're going to get five patrons after five o'clock stacked up um, is, is, is very, you know, the likelihood is very small. Yeah. Uh, additionally, they would be stacking for no purpose. They wouldn't be able to walk into the site and if no one's at the office and attending there, there'd be no purpose for them to be stacked. I, I Correct. And, see the closed gate and then leave. And if they had a if they had rented a unit, they would have access via during hours of operation up until ten o'clock via Bluetooth on their phone, or there will be a keypad at the gate. The gate will open to let them in. Ten after ten, you can't get in even if you're a renter. That's correct. We we have the ability to, to sh, you know to sh, shut down the uh, the Bluetooth component of their phone and and the keypad. Uh, it's all computerized. Same same with the building. There's there's a digital uh, keypad to access to enter the buildings, and, and the same those will be, those will be shut down. So even if let's say they walk beyond the gate, they still can't get into the building. And so that was going to be one of my questions. So the hours of operations are going to be something till 10. I, I would be happy to, to shut it down at 10 and the likelihood that there's very limited use. Uh, there's, you know, for people, there's a very limited need or, or typically very limited, limited uh, visits at 10 or later. I don't want to ignore that stormwater question. You know, those are my, my favorite questions. I think a different board would be the better time to really get into the depth of it. But I think for, for this board, uh, the way I can summarize it is that um, this project will be viewed not only by your local Waitley uh, Highway Department, Planning Department, and Conservation Department, but because we're near wetlands, it gets uh, the view of Mark Stinson, uh, from Mass DEP, and because it's on the state road, it also gets stormwater review from Mass DOP. So I, I, I think that we'll get into the, the details as much as you'd like to, and at future meetings where uh, it's, it's in the board's purview, we'll discuss stormwater more, but I think it's important to note that you're getting oversight from a lot of commissions and a lot of state uh, boards in order to make sure we're doing our job. And our job is to make sure that no more stormwater is leaving the site after construction than before construction. I think that's all the questions I have right now. <laughs> okay, thank you. One, maybe it doesn't matter to this board, but just to know in general, what types of merchandise or goods or vehicles are you not allowing there? In other words, are you allowing motor vehicles, or propane tanks, or anything people bring? No, typically a lease reads that nothing with fuel in it or no fuels of any sort, no combustible, combustible materials allowed to be stored. And because it is a, a facility that will be uh, attended most of the hours that it's open, will very carefully manage that. It's it's really important. Vehicles, you know, you can't you can't store a car or an RV or any of that. We don't we don't want um, we don't want you know combustible materials stored in these facilities. There will be sprinkler system in in the three story building because of the size of it. It'll be required to be sprinkled have sprinkler system. Um, it also uh, these these buildings have they're monitored for temperature and humidity and they can trigger alarms if for some reason there is uh you know it's it has compliant with code it has heat and smoke detectors but it also has additional detectors for temperature and humidity that can alert us if there's an issue uh and so they're, they're they've had quite a, an elaborate control system that that helps to monitor that kind of activity but in general these the leases are uh, very strict in that nothing with fuel can be stored. 
Okay, thank you. Did you say you had a presentation from Attorney Burson coming up? Alan Burson is here. Attorney Alan Burson is here. He wanted to, uh, he was going to talk to the, there was some question in the last hearing, public hearing about the uh, requirement of the driveway to be 500 feet from um, any existing driveways. Alan, can yes. you? Yes. Um, hello. Yeah. Um, Mr. Lipton, hello, members of the board. Um, I understand that this issue of Section 13D access control was raised at the prior hearing. I think I can explain that the clear wording of this provision does not even apply to this land, does not apply to the proposed project. Um, just looking at the first paragraph of Section D, the purpose of this subsection is to ensure smooth, efficient, and safe traffic flow by coordinating the location and number, and I emphasize here, of new entrances and exit points. New entrances and exit points. We don't have any of those here. The, um, the only access to, to and from the land has been there for a long time and there's only one of those uh, uh, points. It's only one driveway. Section one goes on to say, all lots of record existing at the, of the effective date of this section shall be allowed only one curb cut. Well, this, it's a little bit ambiguous uh, as to when this lot came into being, but there is a plan on record in the Registry of Deeds from September, 1951 long before the effective date of the ordinance that shows the entire front portion of the lot as it still exists today. It shows the front approximately 270 feet of the lot. Um, it does not show the easterly line of the lot. So one could argue that it doesn't show a lot, but I think for purposes of the statute that satisfies section one that it was existing as of the effective date of the section. <clears throat> um, the, the section two then goes on and addresses what really is the whole point of this. Yeah, I'm sorry. That one for a minute, because it was, it was rather quick. I wanted to see that a little bit more. Uh, there we go. So which is yeah. the line, which is the line? Well, it shows that Stanley uh, Rogales Rogaleski, yeah. that's the land. This same exact configuration as exists today. It, as, as I said, it does not show the easterly line, but what it shows, which is approximately 270 feet back from the highway is exactly as it exists today. Does it show the driveway on there? No. Um, nor, yeah, it does not. So my, my point was that I think that plan shows um, th that the lot uh, was existing as of the effective date of the ordinance, which was uh, April 1987. And this plan was 1951. Yeah, and here's the existing configuration of the lot. You can see the front of it is the exact same thing as shown on the, on the current plan. What year is that plan, 88? That's the year This of one is 88, yes. The one, the, the uh, right. And it looks like it's a Rogaleski, maybe the sun or something. Yes, R Rogaleski, I believe, yeah. Um, that um, that was uh, uh, in the same family, a different member of the Rogaleski family in 1951, when the plan, uh, when the earlier plan was recorded. So the whole front of the land has not changed the configuration at all. And, it, and the access to the highway is the same as uh, now as it was then. So I, I su submit that the, provision and section and subsection one 
that the lot of record existing as of the effective date shall be allowed one, well, it says only one curb cut. We're only asking for one, the same one that's been there. So section two and three of the um, ordinance then go on and deal with what really is the whole point of this uh, provision, which is subdividing a parcel into multiple individual lots and the uh, section D deals with allowing the individual lots access to the highway. That's very limited and provision for having them separated by 250 feet or 500 feet, but that doesn't even apply to us because Mr. Salura has one parcel. He is not subdividing it at all. So the entire section does not, uh, section three that talks about distance between driveways doesn't even apply to us. Um, this, so I suggest that this just is a non-issue. There's one lot, one access, it's been there since, well, the lot has been there since 1951, um, nothing's changed. So you're saying that 500 foot figure only applies if he were to try to subdivide. Yes. In, yeah. In subsection three, it says there shall not be more than two driveway openings from parking areas with six or more plus spaces. Part and two driveway openings. We're only asking for one the existing one, but then the next sentence says parcel lands may be divided into lots and recorded after, but all vehicular movements, well, anyway, we're not dividing it into lots. This just doesn't apply to us. It's the original lot, it's going to be used as originally configured. So there's no subdivision into parcels. Oh, yeah, and that point A is, is uh, below a colon, below subsection three. So the way you're reading it is you don't even get to that 500 foot minimum. Right. If you're not That's true. That is, that is what I believe it says. You don't even get to subsection A or B, sub subsection A or B with the minimum separation. Yeah, it's preceded by language about dividing the parcel into, into lots. We're not dividing anything. Oh, very interesting. Okay, very good. Board members, you. have any questions about that? No, I don't. No. Now, Ms. West, um, your attorney was here last time, Mr. Fitzgibbon, is he appearing today? Uh, no, he is not. All right, what else have we got? Hey, Mary, can you update us on the planning board? What's their um, uh, schedule as far as this position? Is uh, <clears throat> uh, the 27th, I believe. Um, I'll have to check. <clears throat> Be right with you. Coming up. Mary, we all admire your ability to toggle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. Um, it's uh, Tuesday, May 27th at 515, their Sovereign Builders uh, site plan review uh, is, is scheduled for 515. Okay. So now, um, 
just refresh my memory, the sign or the size of the sign, uh, the pylon sign is, um, is what again? It is to match the, your the zoning bylaws. I will pull that up. So I do not state the size. A proposed pylon sign with a maximum height of 10 feet and a maximum area of nine square feet. Nine square feet being possibly three by three, which is a, a small sign. Right. Well, um, this is our second hearing. We had a view. Without any further ado, unless there's other questions or comments, we can uh, move to close the public hearing portion and consider this in, in public in our dialogue section and then continue to vote tonight, unless anyone else on the board has any other thoughts about it. But well, we should decide. Um, Kristen, you're not disqualified from this one. Who's going to be Mr. the- Mr. Lipton, yeah. can, I, can I ask for a moment? Um, I have a wife who just came home from nine days in the hospital. Oh. And I, I want to um, be sure there are not any questions of board members for me. And if not, I'll sign off. I'd I have to answer any questions. I don't have any other questions for Attorney Burson. Nor do I. Nor do I. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. With the pleasure of the board, I'll I'll sign off so I can check on other things. Okay. Thanks, Alan. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. So I was about to say, who are the voting members tonight on this particular one? I'll, I'll vote. I can vote. I can vote. Kristen, okay, go ahead. All right, so those are the three. Um, actually, I have a question before we proceed to vote. I'm just looking and I should be probably more familiar with it. Um, where do you see the the 10 foot height and the nine square foot provisions. I know I've seen it before, but I'm just not spotting it. In the signs? Yeah. Sign regulations, page 21, I believe. Oh, I see it, it's point C, yeah, okay. I've got it, all right. Just right. As, a, as a final comment, yeah. if, I, if I may. In speaking with a number of the other abutters, none of which are here, they were they were in favor of this uh, this use, and that's I'll just leave it at that. And and they're clearly not opposed because they haven't come to the come to the meetings in in opposition. Well, actually, it's a good question. So, uh, Ms. West, at, at this juncture, are you opposing this project or in favor or neutral? What's your position? Um, I guess I will say neutral right now, or, uh, or he is saying he is opposed to it. Um, yeah, I'm opposed to it due to the proximity to our other property line. Okay. It's Thank a loading zone. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna make my motion to close the public dialogue portion of the meeting. I can second. Okay, so then we'll continue to uh, debate this or discuss it in, in uh, public view here right on Zoom.
So, excuse me, but what, what was the name of uh, the fellow who just? David Bergman. Okay, <laughs> thank you. You can call him Mr. West though, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I remembered from last week, that was not the case. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I appreciate Attorney Verson's uh, um, narrative on that particular bylaw because we have not addressed that before as a board. And I did find it convincing as to uh, uh, walking through each of the points and the, the 500 feet limitation, although it appeared to stand out at first, does not apply because there's no subdivision in play here. Um, so that would be a good thing in favor of the petition. So, yeah, we had the view, um, obviously it's a wooded area, um, hasn't been disturbed for many years, uh, but it is in the commercial zone. So um, with special permit, uh, he has a right to build a, a storage facility um, you know, it seems large compared to other storage facilities in, in Waitley, but that's not a reason to deny it. Uh, if he wants to take the business risk of building it, uh, that's, on, that's on him. It seems to be that there's been some uh, modifications to screen it from the public. And of course, the planning board the Conservation Commission and, and the state agencies still have their shot at um, regulating this. But as far as a pure special permit uh, analysis, it's uh, allowed if we think it's within, um, well, that it's not substantially uh, gonna derogate the, the neighborhood. And the neighborhood is a commercial zone, even though there are residences around it. So I'm leaning in, favor of it is what I'm saying. Yeah. No, I I I have to agree, Roger, and I and that I understand Megan and and your spouse. I absolutely understand the um the discomfort you feel. Um you know, you, you bought a, ho a home and, and are working on a home and in what is right now a very rural area, but it is a commercial zone. It was designated as that, you know, when you bought your property. Um, I, I think that uh, this is an allowed use in the zone. And um, as Roger said, the Conservation Commission, the Planning Board, they are going to be weighing in as well. Um, I, I do think that the petitioners have uh, put together a, a very, very detailed plan, have been willing to make some changes with it. At this point, I, I don't have, um, I, I really can't. Uh, will be voting in favor of this. And, and I agree, it, it is an appropriate use. And I think that they, uh, the builder there has, has gone to lengths to you know, shield the abutters. And um, I, you know, I know that storage facilities are, you know, cause I, I actually um, rent in a few of them <laughs> They're very low use. I mean, there's, you know, there's not a lot of people there, you know, usually I'm like one, the only person at my storage facility. So I, I don't, I, I think that as time goes on, that it won't be as bad as what could possibly be there. I mean, it is a lot for sale. It is, someone's going to buy it, you know, and, and this is a low use lot. So, um, I think it's you know very appropriate, and I think I will be voting in in favor of it also. Hey, I just I'm going to open this back up to the petitioner and, and to the, his representative. Uh, I must be late in the evening, and I'm not, my eyes are not as good <laughs> as they are earlier. Where is our the bullet point that allows this via a special permit in the table of uses? I'm just not. Oh yeah, I had I had looked at that earlier, Roger. Um... I know it's there, but I'm just not. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hang on. Going through it as well. I'm sorry. 
we, these have never been these have never been numbered, <laughs> which has always been a, a problem when you peruse these. You you get lost in them. Okay, hang on. I think it's page ten, top of page ten. Top of page ten. Yes, yes. Warehouses, wholesale trade and distribution, bulk storage, or the storage of materials, merchandise, products, or equipment, provided that the use is within an enclosed building and is not hazardous. In commercial, special permit. Well, that makes sense. I had dog-eared this page, and I. I know. I know. I had looked at it earlier too, and lost. Let's see it. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that satisfies me in the sense that we. We're not going to give a special permit if it's not potentially allowed. So it is allowed both in commercial and in commercial slash industrial. Okay. So um, that being said, I would proceed to cast the first vote in favor. I also vote in favor. And Kristen, I will make it anonymous. Unanimous. Unanimous. <laughs> unanimous. Not anonymous. Unanimous. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's late. anonymous. <laughs> um, the second permit requested is for the sign. So, um, as we just went through, it, it meets the uh, minimum requirements for the uh, so called off premises sign. It's not very far off the premises, but it's off the premises. Um, and I am comfortable. I didn't actually, when I took the view, I forgot to just stand next to it and eyeball the view, but um, I'm, I'm comfortable knowing that the OT has got a sign off on it. So yeah. um, in terms of its size, it fits within the category of um, what we can allow by special permit. So I'd be in favor of that special permit as well. So I cast a favorable vote. I do too. I do three. I do three. <laughs> All right, so it's unanimous on both those special permits, uh, which is what's required. And then that is it. Uh, we'll proceed to write it up and file it with the town. And you know the procedure. You going to wait 20 days for any appeals to uh, be filed or not. And then you can pick it up and record it at the registry of deeds. Thank you all so much for your time and this much appreciated. You are welcome. You're welcome. Thank you very much for your time and your work. Okay, thanks. Okay. So we still have some business to talk about here, the board. Um, one is the uh, mechanics of writing these up, which are, I found, harder <laughs> when you're doing it on your own after the fact. Um, so there's two of them. <coughs> Deborah want to take one, I'll take the other. Oh my God, Roger, I can't do it. I mean, I feel like I would need meetings. I would need notes at this point. Right. I mean. Denial of the variance, denial of the variance is pretty simple. I can follow the format in the Pekarsky one. So I'll, I'll just do that. So in this one, yeah, minutes would be useful. I mean, Mary, how long do you think it would take to get your minutes ready? Oh, <laughs> I'll shove something else aside. <laughs> I know it, you know, this is it takes 30 days. We don't have to do it immediately because yeah. other, okay. other boards aren't meeting either. So maybe by June 6th, if you could have them, that okay. would be good. And then speaking of the minutes, you wanted us to approve some other minutes. Uh, there were two <clears throat> that were up for approval last meeting, the ones for February 4th and March 4th. Uh, you had said at the time that uh, they were fine with you, but we never got to them. I don't know if people are prepared to do this. Have you read them recently? <laughs> Maybe, uh, I mean, we, we can hold it till till June 3rd if if people aren't, you well, know, I don't know if you're as they need to be. <laughs> um, I, I, I actually Obviously. have not looked at them. I mean, from our last we meeting. Better wait so. till, we can wait, wait till the third then, I guess. Well, you know what? Deborah wasn't even present for all of those. No, I wasn't. And and, and yeah. yeah, and you know, to be honest, Roger, I'm a little uncomfortable writing up this big this big storage one. I mean, I'd almost um I'd almost prefer the variance. It just came tonight. I was here for that as opposed to all of these. So 
Um, you want the variance? You got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Give you my decision on the Pekarsky one, so you can use it as a. I'll email it to you. Yeah, you that'd be great because I wasn't there for that one. Right. Okay. All right. So that's. All right, I'll do that. All right. Then I'll wait for the minutes. So then we'll, we, yeah, we should probably have Bob Smith back to approve the minutes. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Okay. We don't have, we don't have, we'll just be sticking with uh, Jan, uh, with June 3rd for the Three River Road one. I think that makes sense. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask, advertise that. And we'll also be doing the one for the uh, former brewery turning into an ADU on the third also. Yes. We've got those two things for June already. <laughs> busy time at the ZBA. Yes, our busiest. And the planning board is, is the same way. It used to be, you know, we usually, we don't meet until unless there's a, a hearing they used to meet mostly for with no hearings. They do, you know, just doing general business among themselves and zone <laughs> changes and that kind of thing. But th they're doing the same hearings we're doing. So, you know, they're, they're two and three hearings at every meeting, just like we are. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, but uh, no, nothing, we don't have anything scheduled between now and June 3rd. So we've got two things for June 3rd and plus Sovereign Builders is coming back for June 3rd. Um, Not Sovereign Builders. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's what that's what you just did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Water yeah. Water department. Well, Scott continued the- uh, <laughs> Water department. The water department will be returning on June 3rd. So we'll have three slots filled for that also. Okay. Already. <laughs> and, and, and Roger, do you have blank fillable copies of the decision? Yes. Okay, that I need to. Well, it's a fillable, fillable by hand. Oh, fillable by hand. Okay, they're not, they, they can't be, they're not word process possible. No one's ever done it yet. Oh, man. Didn't we have that with Don Sluter for a while? Yeah, but it never. I can check with Lynn and see if she has an editable copy, but I, I think we went. Through. No, I, I, I can, I can do the variance one by hand. I, I just, and if I, especially if I have the model of the one that you guys did. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? I don't think so. Yes, that's it. All right. So we'll see you Saturday. See people on Saturday. Yes, 11 o'clock.